Hey guys, and welcome to Lunchtime Live. I hope you guys are having an awesome day. I'm gonna um, take a quick second here and share the live stream on my author page too. Since as you know, I always end up talking about the book briefly at the beginning, and of course I share a nugget every, uh, every week, and so I wanna make sure that that is um, something that the folks that follow me over there can get to see who just came. Hi, Annette. Good to see you. I'm just taking two seconds to share this post on my author page. All right. I have done it. Let's see. I'm going to my list to see what I have here to show you. Oh, yes. Okay. So the book release was this past week. Yay. And uh, people started receiving their books. And so I got lots of fun smiling face pictures and I'm gonna share some with you this uh, was the very first person to send me a smiling face picture and she was my first five-star review thank you Carolyn and uh, so I have my first Etsy review uh, not Etsy Amazon review and so I did want to say if you got one of the books and if you've been blessed by it Please do consider leaving. Uh, these aren't showing up that well. Come on. <laughs> That's my publisher, by the way. And then, oh, we got Jane here with Vi. Yay. And Miss Elisa, smiling faces. And my mama. More than just my relatives and friends got it, though. But this one is one of my favorites. This is not a smiling pick because she couldn't get in the box. <laughs> Someone actually shared this with me. She is actually trying to rip into the box that has that has the book in it. That just cracks me up. So anyway, just thought I'd share those little fun ones. So all that to say, if you got a book, please consider leaving a review. Um, they really do help. So it's appreciated. Like for Amazon doesn't start showing you in certain searches until after you've got like 25 reviews or something like that. I guess that's how they know that you're legit if more than like just your family and friends are the ones commenting on it. So anyway, so if you got a copy of Daily Downloads from Heaven, and guess what I have to show you? Hi, Nadia. My hardback arrived two days ago. Oh, the dog's looking around thinking someone's at the door. No, Max, it was the book. It was the book. That's right, you wanna come see it? Oh, okay, Max is coming to check out the book. That's right, because he was concerned someone was trying to visit us in the middle of uh, in the middle of our show. That's right, we're talking to the nice people. All right, thank you. You gonna go lie down again? All right, thank you. Anyway, the uh, hardback arrived, <laughs> and uh, and it it's really lovely too. I mean, it's beautifully made, and you know, same as same as with the paperback. You know, you've got the you know the nuggets, which each download is just like you know. This one is just this. So for those of you who don't have a lot of time, I had someone who I was talking to who was like, oh, I wanna buy your book. I just have so many books that I haven't gotten a chance to read yet. And I'm like, that's okay. I'm like, this is an easy one. I'm like, just like throw it on the back of the toilet or you know, or someplace else next to your bedside table or wherever you might be or in the kitchen, you know, so you can like read it while stuff is, you know, cooking or whatever if you're standing there any place that you might have a few moments hi Becky it's nice to see you here um, any place that you might have a couple of moments where you're um, gonna be just having a breather it's a good place to have it because literally they're so short so um, they're just they're per they're literally just little bite-sized pieces so anyway very exciting stuff so woot woot. yeah I've got um, I have uh, some paperback copies coming this way that uh, my mama got me for my birthday. And so I probably am gonna be doing some giveaways in the not too distant future, um, which I'm pretty excited about. So, okay, next thing I'm sharing this week is a testimony. And uh, we titled the testimony Flagging in the Butterfly Effect. It's uh, shared on the diedforyou.com blog. And so hold on, I'm gonna pull it up real quick. But basically, uh, this is a story about, I actually happen to have the twin 
to the flags that she got. So I'm gonna show you live and in person which flags she got. These are called Crown of Glory and these are part of our painted collection. And so you'll see, look at that gorgeous painting in the middle of it. For those of you who haven't already heard me talk about this or haven't noticed the, the uh, prayer shawl that I use each week, um, we have a team member who is a very uh, anointed artisan in her own right. And so we have teamed up with Miss Becky. I'm so glad you're here today since I'm talking about you. Um, and so I, Larissa or I will dye the silk and we'll send it to Becky. And Becky will pray over it and then paint a prophetic portrait, a, a prophetic picture on it as well. And so when somebody gets one of these, they get the word that goes with the silk. Plus there's a prophetic word that comes with the... Um, you know, with the painting portion that's on it as well. These are a huge labor of love, I'm just gonna tell you. And I actually, in the blog post, talk about this because one of her, you know, comments in there is that it was a pretty expensive flag, and she's not wrong. But the irony is, and this is something that I explained, is we've had a terrible time trying to figure out how to price these because the amount of hours that go into making them <laughs> would make them um, just, you know, not accessible price-wise. So the uh, the painting portion, you know, we've added at like, you know, it, it comes out to like maybe an average of like five bucks an hour or something like that. It's really, we've decided that we're going to gift a portion of the labor just because we want to make them uh, accessible um, at, at a, a price point that some people can can reach. So anyway, that's that's why, but they still, they're not cheap flags regardless because there's a lot of labor that goes into these but anyway they come out as you can see just beautifully and i know that you've seen the uh, the lion that's on my tallit which you'll see again later when i pull it back out but anyway so this is the one that she did the testimony on because this was the pair that god drew her to because we had a pair of these that matched this on etsy and so she had seen them she was over in singapore and so she'd seen them, she kept going back to them and she was praying about it. She's like, that's a lot of money. And God, you know, basically was just like, you know, um, challenged her, like, isn't it worth being equipped with what I've called you to carry, essentially. And so she went ahead and got them and was so blessed by them. And she shares that part of what God showed her when she was flagging is what's called the butterfly effect, which is basically like, you know, a uh, butterfly on one side of the world can flap their wings and the ripple effect from that could be, you know, like a, a, a tornado or something, you know, on the other side of the world or, or a hurricane. That's the word I'm looking for, a hurricane on the other side of the world. And so it, in essence, it's talking about kind of that, the impact, that ripple impact that you have. And so, so often we feel just like a butterfly flapping its wings, which doesn't feel like it's having that much impact. But the fact is, is the ripple ramification of that impact can be much larger than we're conscious of. And I just thought that was a really neat insight for God to give her. And so what she was seeing as she was using her flags and moving them was just that, you know, that butterfly wing kind of a ripple in the atmosphere. And just knowing that she's shifting that atmosphere through through that movement, right? It's just that trust that God is moving in the midst of that praise, in the midst of that worship, right? Which is what is what it's about, <laughs> you know? I mean, part of what it's about, a lot of what it's about is just worshiping him and, and giving glory to him, but he moves through that, right? So anyway, I've noticed that right is one of my filler words. So I apologize because I was watching um, the video that I shot yesterday that I shared this morning on the author page, you may have seen it already. And if not, I'm making reference to it. Um, also later today, because we're talking about identity stuff and this was tied in with it. And, uh, but while I was watching the video, I realized how often I use the word right when I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for midpoint agreement, right? Yes, right, yes. <laughs> anyway, all right. Let me head back to my list and see where I'm headed next. Oh, yes. Show and tell. Uh, I am showing you... Um, I am showing you a... Why did I decide to show you this one? I don't remember why I decided to show you this one today. Maybe it was just because I was excited about it, but... I have another dyed for you flute that has um, just landed on the Etsy page. Last week, I showed you guys this one. This is the Catalyst to Intimacy, you can see, and this is an F sharp. This is another F sharp. This one um, is one of the ones that has two woods on it, so it's 
a, you can see it's got the curly maple in there, but it also has the liptus end caps and it has the mango bird. And this is a multi-word flute. So the, um, the bird, the mango bird is dyed in breakthrough and the flute is dyed in from morning to dancing. And so Joyous Daybreak is the name of this flute. And I'm just gonna tell you, it's an awesome word. <laughs> this was a fun one to birth. So it partially because it was just unexpected because it was kind of the story of how it ended up with this particular bird is kind of an interesting sort of roundabout story, but you know, it's, um, that was the reason why I was telling you that. But where did I? Oh, it's because I shared it yesterday. That was why I was thinking of it. So the, um, the nugget that I shared yesterday called Press Through was actually inspired by the whole process of birthing this flute. Because when the flute finished, the bird that I had intended to use on it didn't work with it. And um, like functionally didn't work with it. <laughs> And I was freaking out because I was like, wait a minute, I have this beautiful flute and it's not working. <laughs> what do I do? And so, of course, you know, call a friend. And so I contacted my uh, my flute buddy, Miss Mary, and I'm like, Mary, Mary, what do I do? What do I do? <laughs> and she said, try another bird. She's like, if you haven't dyed it, swap the bird out. And I was like, oh, yeah, I could do that because I've, I've done that before, except for the problem was is I'd already dyed the bird. And I thought, <coughs> what do I do? And all of a sudden, God highlighted to me my breakthrough flute, which I believe I've also showed you on here, because I think that was the one I showed you uh, when I actually first introduced the uh, Died For You flutes. And, um, and this was the bird that went on that flute, because it's breakthrough. And um, what was funny is the style of wood that that flute is, it's, it's the uh, rustic cherry, and it has a different feel. So you know how like with the with the curly maple, you have this neat figuring and it's got kind of this tigery striping. And the mango gets a similar kind of tigery striping, but the cherry doesn't. The cherry is kind of a flat finish. And so I personally had not liked the contrast of the mango against the rustic cherry. And so all of a sudden God highlights this, this um, bird to me. And so I went and got it and I put it on here and I thought, Oh my gosh, I mean, it couldn't have matched better if I had tried. And the the bird that was originally with this flute, that he had sent me with this flute, was um, was a cherry, or no, a, a red gum, which looks very similar to the cherry uh, bird. And so it literally looked like it was made to match mine. And so I put it on there and it worked. And then this one worked on here. And I was like, wow, I'm like, okay, God, I'm like, so did we just make like a multi-word flute? And he was like, yes, you did. And I was like, oh, okay. So, uh, then we birthed it. And so the, the nugget that came from that whole thing, cause God was like showing me like when, when you meet resistance, you have to not assume it's the enemy, okay? Because I think that so often that we do that, right? And then what ends up happening is we end up, you know, giving credit to the enemy and praising the enemy unintentionally because we're talking about, oh, you know, well, the enemy was blocking me and rah, 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 rah. And, and sometimes it's not the enemy blocking you. And, and the scripture that God gave me was with uh, Balaam where, you know, he's got an angel of the Lord blocking his path and he doesn't see it, but the donkey does. And the donkey's refusing to go forward and Balaam's getting mad and beating the donkey. <laughs> Finally, the donkey's like, dude, what's your deal? There's a, you know, I can't pass. And all of a sudden he sees the angel. Oh, okay. And so he had to take another path, right? Which in his case was turn around and go, go back, you know, because God was blocking him, right? And so sometimes God is blocking us because he wants us to redirect or he wants us to turn around. And so some of this is being sensitive to when you feel that resistance and be sensitive but ask, what am I supposed to do? Because there are times where God wants to build your strength, right? If you're a, uh, a bird breaking out of an eggshell, when you meet that resistance of the shell, you're not supposed to give up and redirect. In that case, you're supposed to press through. So some of it is knowing, is this a moment where I have to go through it or is this a moment where I have to go a different way? And so the, the nugget that I had shared yesterday called press through is talking about being sensitive to that, being sensitive to which direction am I supposed to go? Like, where, where am I going with that? So anyway, that was, that was kind of a fun one. And that, um, yeah, so that was, that was shared on yesterday's and that was connected to the post that I shared 
yesterday to expect imperfections, but I don't remember why it was connected right now, but that may come to me later. But I'm gonna talk about that one later. So I'm putting a little mouth, mouthpiece on here so I can do my little show and tell and let you guys hear this one. <laughs> I see some other people have joined, but I'm not seeing who it is. And I just suddenly realized I have not seen any comments yet. It's telling me who's on here, but it's not showing me comments again. So I'm going to take two seconds and refresh over here. Oops, let me turn down the volume so I don't end up with you guys listening to it over here too. And let me just see, because it could be just that no one's talking, which is possible. Um, hold on a second. Oh, you are talking. Hold on a sec. Let me see what you guys, all right. Oh, right is a filler word for a lot of people. Interesting. I know, isn't that neat with the ripple effect, Becky? I thought so too. Yeah, I actually, Becky, I just finally posted her testimony yesterday. So I apologize that I hadn't posted it earlier and I should have sent you the link when I did, but it's up there now. Yeah, Elisa, that's true. Elisa does some transcription work and so she would be very conscious of all of the filler words that people use. It really is like a, like a sunrise. I know, I love the way this one came out. I really have been enjoying the way that the gradients have looked. And of course, you know, I've done the the, uh, the rainbow one, but I've done some other ones that are sort of gradient-like, um, but not necessarily rainbows. And I've really liked the way that they came out. I just thought that, uh, okay, wait, I lost my comments. So I, which direction? I have to tell you that on the um, on the iPad, it's really frustrating because the comments disappear. <laughs> so it's like I'm like trying to get it back, and you can't figure out whether you have to swipe or tap the screen, and it doesn't it doesn't show up that well. Um, hi, Sherry. Welcome. Nice to see you. All right. Well, I'm gonna leave that there in the background, and I'm gonna show you this. Okay. So again, this is called Joyous Daybreak. And this is in the key of F sharp and oh, curly maple, liptus at the ends, mango on the bird. So that's just a quick one, just so you can get the sense of it. It is it is a lovely one. It's it's a soft, kind of a breathy one, um, but it has a very sweet sound to it. And so anyway, so this, this is Joyous Daybreak. This one is on um, Etsy, and that is our show and tell for the day. All right, let me put my little mouthpiece back over here. And let me have a sip of coffee, because it is still early in the day for me. For those of you who don't know, I'm very much a night person, so. This is at 1 p.m. Central Time. I have to set an alarm for it every week, so that tells you something. <laughs> Not that I would sleep through it, but I wouldn't wake up early enough to be ready. Okay, let's see, what else did I have? So today, I think everything else that I'm talking about is kind of connected. And so what we're talking about today is kind of your truthful identity, like who you really are. And so that's part of why I'm showing this one. This is actually from my personal collection, but it's twin is available on Etsy as well. This is called Inherent Identity, and this is a streamer flag. And so for those of you who don't know how the streamer flags work, they basically, they are a multi-word silk also. So like, for example, on this one, you can see that it actually has four different silks. So the word that comes with this is pretty huge because it's got not just the four individual words that go with each of these silks, but it also has the multi-word one that kind of takes, okay, this is what all four of these together mean. And they mean inherent identity, which is what uh, the name of this one is. And so, um, hang on a second, because I'm just going to go back over here and see um, if you guys are talking to me. I'm just going to have to do that periodically, so bear with me with that. Oh, it's so frustrating. I, I really almost like want to show you guys this, because it's just, it doesn't, it, I'm probably going to have to go back and look at comments more later, because it's just not, oh, yay, well, tell Pearl I said hi. Finally, I found it. 
eventually I'll figure out how to do this. So, um, oh, I want to show you the Died For You art piece, which is called Vibrantly Designed. Um, oh, I realized I didn't show you this. Just real quick before we move on. This is just the, hey, come on. This is the uh, little picture that we did based off of her sweet little review that went with the flags. So anyway, just fun stuff. And I've gotten smart now, so if I actually want you guys to be able to read something, I flip it ahead of time because it shows everything backwards to you. But this is vibrantly designed. I'm probably gonna have to bring it in and kind of scroll down because otherwise it won't show you. But this one is vibrantly designed. And this is one of our Died For You art pieces. And, and a lot of the heart behind this piece is about knowing who you are and, um, and holding on to that. And so actually, I'm going to go ahead and read, um, I think I'm going to go ahead and read today's nugget real quick, which of course will require my reading glasses. So thank you for your patience. Oh, I have a thumbprint right in the middle of that one. Hold on. How many of you guys out there wear glasses? <laughs> this is such a new experience for me. I'm not used to this. I'm still <coughs> adjusting. And I have to tell you, I have reading glasses uh, stashed almost everywhere all over the house. It's pretty funny. <coughs> okay, so the, uh, the nugget that I'm sharing today is called Refuse to Believe the Lies. And this is out of John 10, 27. This is the Amplified. The sheep that are my own hear my voice and listen to me. I know them and they follow me. And there's a second scripture at the bottom that's also connected with this that is out of 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5. This is the voice where demolishing arguments and ideas, every high and mighty philosophy that pits itself against the knowledge of the one true God. We are taking prisoners of every thought, every emotion, and subduing them into obedience to the anointed one. And so this is the word that he gave with this. Beloved, refuse to believe the lies that the enemy throws your way. You are mine, and those who are mine know my voice, and they will not follow another's. So pause as you listen and recognize who is speaking, that you might rightly determine which words are of value and, which to, to, and to which you should pay no heed. For the enemy of your soul will always toss thought bombs at you like grenades. Their intention is to maim and destroy. Refuse to give them power by simply rejecting them as you identify their origin. Toss them out, beloved. Take every thought captive and make it submit to my truth. Beloved, you know me. You know my heart towards you is good. Refuse to believe anything less. Refuse to settle for anything less. Know that you are precious, prized, the apple of my eye, my heart's desire. Know the truth of your identity as you rest in the cocoon of my love. I just love that. That's so beautiful. And, you know, I think, I think what can end up happening is we, and this is, this is what I talked about yesterday. We have expectations for ourselves that, um, that aren't the same as the expectations that the Lord has for us. And, and often that is actually what causes us, um, the most distress is because we're not living up to, um, the things that we think that we should be living up to. And so in my post, Expect Imperfections, which again, I shared uh, in the wee hours this morning, um, what I was saying is that we need to align with God's expectations for us, right? Because if Jesus is the only one who's perfect and sinless, why do we think that we're going to achieve that, achieve that perfection? And if we intellectually understand that we're not going to achieve that perfection, then why are we angry at ourselves when we don't? Um, I'm not talking about not having godly repentance. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm also not talking about taking kind of a lackadaisical um, approach to it and just being like, meh, you know, oh well, I guess, I did. I guess I'm not going to be able to achieve that, so I'm not going to try. I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about for people who earnestly are seeking to follow the Lord, understand you won't always get it right, and that's okay. Okay, so 
God knows how you're made. He knows the things that have impacted you. He knows the things that have wounded you that cause you to respond out of your flesh sometimes. And that doesn't mean that you're not doing your best. You're doing your best. It's just that you are, um, you, you act from sort of the sum total of the experiences that you've had, right? And so even when you're doing your best, you're not always going to get it perfectly. But some of this is about being willing to learn from those experiences. And so when those, when those mishaps happen, rather than wasting time beating yourself up, being angry with yourself, being frustrated, allowing shame to come in, because what happens is when we do that, truly, we open a door to all of these negative emotions, which really makes us vulnerable to attacks from the enemy. And so it's, it's not just purposeless for us to indulge in this, it also is actually potentially harmful. The other thing that happens is if we're struggling with shame, Frequently, shame will keep us from being able to be intimate with God because we'll feel like, why would you possibly love me? Why would you want to talk to me? Why I'm so imperfect. I'm so this. I'm so that. And so um, that's really the heart behind the uh, the nugget that is that we shared today. There also was another post on my blog called em Embracing Your um, Inherent Identity. And that also talks about not allowing other people to sort of project onto you who you are. So for people who have kind of a vivacious personality, you know, obviously I do, Larissa really does as well, as you know, if you follow her. And so frequently people who are very passionate get told by people who are intimidated by them that they are too much, right? But this is how we were made. God didn't think that we were too much, right? And so some of it is just because you're not somebody's flavor doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. Like God has created you to reach a particular group of people. And so if one person just doesn't mesh with you, okay, that's fine, move on. Their feelings towards you don't get to superimpose on you and then define who you are. Hi, Sister Ari. Sorry, my sister just joined. Love you. Um, so we need to we need to be so solid in who God says that we are that that's not shakable. It's not shakable by the lies that get thrown at us from the enemy. It is not shakable by our own you know feelings of uh, inadequacy or failure or whatever it is that we perceive to be our mess ups. It is not shakable by the things that other people would say about us and speak over us and try to you know, superimpose on us. It is just what he says. And some of this requires being intimate with him, being um, intentional and having that time with him so that you know who he is. And I'm just gonna tell you right now, a lot of that time needs to happen in the word. The word is the truth. It's the word of God. This is his love letter to us. And so if you are not spending time in the word, and I'm not trying to make anybody feel guilty. I'm not trying to shame somebody into doing this. I'm just telling you, you know, when, when Jesus combated the lies that the enemy threw at him, what he combated them with was scripture, okay? If you don't know the word of God, you are leaving yourself vulnerable to the lies of the enemy because how do you know what truth is, right? How, do you, how can you recognize a lie if you don't know what truth is? And the truth is in the word. So if you don't know the word, if you don't spend time in the word, then then you're missing out <laughs> because you don't know what that looks like, you know? And there's so many different ways. And again, I know this is something that I, I talk about regularly, but just wanting to continually encourage you guys, you know, if, if you are not a, a strong reader, if that isn't something that you do, listen to it, get it on audiobook. Or, or for me, I have my Kindle read to me. Not everybody can, can handle that because she has kind of a robotic voice when you use the, uh, the, the text to speech feature, but I got used to it. And so I will flip back and forth between reading it and, and having it read to me, but find a way to get it. There's apps that you can use that have, you know, um, daily scripture readings where it will automatically play all of the scripture readings for that day. And, and this is not something where you have to feel like you have to do a ton every day. Like don't make it so big that you won't ever do it. Like if, if all you can commit to is like 
one minute a day, commit to the one minute a day. Like leave a Bible sitting next to your toilet or something. I mean, you know, you're gonna have a whole stack of books there. <laughs> By the time you're done, I'm suggesting sticking daily downloads there. If all you can do is one verse, start with one verse and just be consistent because the, the, the relationship with God is one built over time, okay? So you can't go from having no relationship to expecting, you know, deep and and fellowship and intimacy immediately you don't you don't that doesn't happen immediately in the same way that like you wouldn't expect to meet someone one day and then have the same relationship as a couple that's been married for 70 years the next day it doesn't happen like that i mean you can have those moments where you feel connected to somebody right away and 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 i'm not saying there can't be connection but there are things that only come over time where you get to know one another and you get to talk to one another. And that's what happens when you spend time in God's word. The other thing is, is when you are hearing the voice of God or learning to hear the voice of God, knowing the word helps you to be able to understand whether it's truth or not what you're hearing. Because you're going to say, does that line up with what I know of God's character? And if you don't know what God's character is, or if the only way that you know it is through teachings that you've heard. And guys, I am not saying that teachings are bad, but what I'm saying is it can be like the telephone game, okay? Because we all hear in part and prophesy in part. This is actually, that's actually one of the scriptures that I talked about with the uh, embrace imperfections, right? So I know going into it, I'm going to miss God sometimes, or I'm only going to have part of the picture, right? So I don't necessarily have the whole picture, I just have the part that I've seen, okay? so. I know that when I'm expressing, even what I'm expressing to you right now may not be the full picture for you, right? This is just the piece that I have. So I'm sharing my piece and you're taking that piece and you're seeking more, okay? That's what that's how it's supposed to work. And so if we all hear in part and prophesy in part, that that means that you have to you have to have that relationship too. Otherwise, you're only getting that partial picture from one person or from multiple people. But you have to be able to add that to what you have yourself, which requires you personally having a relationship with him. So anyway, hopefully, hopefully that's an encouragement to some people. Hang on a second. I'm gonna go and check and see if you guys um, have comments. Thank you for being patient with me while I'm having to sort of uh, fake how this is working. Oh, hi, Margie. I didn't see you sneak in here. That's fun. Miss Margie has been doing these fun demos on her page with uh, painting silk. She does, um, she does a different style of painting and it is absolutely stunning as well. <laughs> It's gorgeous, so it's been fun kind of seeing behind the scenes how she does that. Um, and and Margie, just so you know, one of the things I've appreciated with what you show is uh, it really helps people to understand how much time and what a labor of love what you do is. <laughs> because as an artist, I know it's so easy for people to sort of misjudge what we do. You know, again, like I was talking about with the ones that Becky has been painting for us and how we've had so much difficulty pricing them because the amount of time that goes into them would just make it cost prohibitive. And so, you know, it's been very difficult. You know, we, we have these gifts. We want to share these gifts. A worker's worth their wage, but at the same time, like we want to make it accessible to the body, you know? And so anyway, so I've, I've loved it as Margie has kind of felt led to share these step by step. It's stuff that's just so, I mean, it's overwhelming to me. I would I don't think I could I wouldn't have the patience to do it the way that she does it, but what she does is absolutely stunning. So it's been beautiful to get a glimpse into that creation process. But uh anyway, I love you girly. Yeah, it is I'm sure it's difficult. <laughs> it looks difficult. You know, it's 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 uh extensive. I mean, yeah. So anyway, it it uh I, I had always felt that your flags, your painted flags were worth every penny of, of what you charge for them. But I'm I, in looking at the process, I'm beginning to think that, that you're probably gifting a lot of your time as well because that is a seriously laborious uh, process. But what you come up with is absolutely stunning. So the example that she's been showing is, um, is her living water piece and it is, uh, absolutely breathtaking um oh yay you paused going live to come visit me i love that that's awesome i'm actually going to take two seconds because 
I want to show you guys this uh, this particular piece of hers that she's been working on because seriously, it is uh, just amazing. I am absolutely in love with this piece. So I'm going to see if I can find this relatively quickly. Um, okay, good. She's got it right here. This is her Living Waters piece that she is showing her uh, process of how to make that. Isn't that stunning? I'm just telling you guys, her work is so, so gorgeous. It is absolutely breathtaking. Seriously, I love it. I'm a big fan, can you tell? I have one of her original canvases and I have a collection. I, I don't have one of her painted flags anymore, which kind of breaks my heart <laughs> because I, I had two pairs and God had me give away one pair and then he had me give away one of the other pair and then he had me give, give away the last one of the other pair and I was like, no! <laughs> and when I did it, like the day after, Margie was like, God's been putting on my heart that I'm supposed to paint another pair of these for I was like, thank you, God. <laughs> you know, there's something about like, you know, actually touching something that another artist made. Um, you know, there's like a, a transfer of anointing that you can feel there. And prints are great, don't get me wrong. I, I love prints and stuff like that too because, you know, obviously dyed for you art, that's what I'm selling because like it's virtually created. So it's not like my hands are actually touching anything. Um, but uh, but there's something, there's something that in touch that is transferred um, that just doesn't feel like it's the same. <laughs> And it's something that's printed as lovely as it is because I have a Margie print over here. That's what's making me think of it because I love that too. Um, that's her I am painting that she's got because she's a, obviously a prophetic artist, uh, not just on silk. So I'm trying to get the comments to show back up again. All right, let's see. So I think, let me see if I've got anything else on my list of stuff. I think I covered everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I did. I covered everything. Awesome. All right. So if you have prayer requests, now is the moment to share those. I'm going to um, pray through the identity stuff, really, because I really just want to take a moment because I know that this is something that so many of us struggle with allowing, you know, the the lies of the enemy, allowing, allowing the words, the hurtful words from other people, you know, allowing our own, um, you know, unrealistic expectations, allowing those things to kind of affect the way that we see ourselves and and um, and how we treat ourselves and and ultimately how how we have intimacy with the Lord or whether we have intimacy with the Lord. So I really feel like this is a very important thing to kind of pray through because really um, for us to truly shine and be who he's created us to be, we have to align with his understanding of who we are. So anyway, send your prayer requests. I'll look them up over here. In the meantime, I'm going to pull out my, this Talit. Margie, if you're still watching, your Talit's on the other side of the room. That's my prayer corner over there. So this is uh, where I always do my uh, weekly live streams. And so I've got my painted one here that, uh, that Becky did for me. This is my um, manifest security. I think you guys. I don't know how much of that you can actually see because my face was covered. But anyway, I always have to make sure that I have it right side up. I don't want my lion upside down when I'm praying. <laughs> All right, let's see what prayer requests. All right, nobody has posted any prayer requests. So I'm just going to go ahead and, um, and get started. Woo. You know, I'm just going to tell you one of the reasons, I think I probably have said this before, one of my favorite reasons of why I like using these is I'm a fidgeter. And so I love having the seat seats here to be able to play with while I'm, uh, while I'm praying. All right, that's looking lopsided. That's going to drive me nuts. Okay. <laughs> Father God, first of all, we just thank you for this time here today. Father, we just thank you that you are highlighting right now the fact that we need to not be believing the lies. And I know that this is a truth that is always true, right? But 
in this moment, you are specifically highlighting that for a reason. I know this came up for a reason this week, and I know that there are people who need this word right now. And so, Father, we just ask right now that if this is an area that we are struggling, if, if whether it be through the lies of the enemy, through the lies that other people are saying about us and over us, not that they're intending to lie, but just, you know, often people can reflect things back to us that are not true, or whether this be through misconceptions that we have over who we should be. Father, we just ask that you would just um, bring those to light. Just highlight areas to us where we are believing something that's not true about ourselves. Father, we want to rightly align with your vision of us and for us, Father. We want to be pleasing to you. We want to walk in the fullness of all that you've created us to be. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You're so good. You're so good. Father, thank you for your love letter to us, your word, Father. Thank you for giving us your truth so that we can recognize lies when they come. Thank you for sharing your heart and your character with us that we might know you more. Thank you for desiring intimacy with us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, I just pray healing right now over every hurtful word that's been spoken. Thank you, Father, for all the people in the sound of my voice and even, even those who are family and friends, anyone connected to the Died For You community, Father, we just pray healing, Father, over their hearts. Father, that we would come into alignment with your view and understanding of who we are, how you created us to be. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You're so good. I just feel like there's actually going to be some physical healings that take place as those uh, heart healings come about. So as we rightly align with him that there's actually like physical things that have, have sort of been like a butterfly effect. So like the ripple effect of believing some lies that those um, have manifested in the physical and that as they realign, um, that the physical is going to heal as well. And so Father, we just thank you right now for those physical healings taking place. Father, I even received that word personally. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you. Bring it all into alignment with your word, your truth, your viewpoint, how you created us to be, Father, both physically and emotionally, Father. Thank you for our true identity, our inherent identity in you. Hallelujah. May you be glorified through each and every one of us. Thank you, Father. You're so good. You're so faithful. You're so faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Father, I just want to pray over people's finances right now. Father, I just, I know that there's so many people who are just struggling to understand how they're going to make ends meet or they have specific needs and no idea how um, they're going to come up with what they need to meet those needs. And Father, we just thank you that you are our provider. Father, we just ask for creative solutions, Father. Creative solutions. You're such a good God. We just ask for favor and increase over each of the lives represented here. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. You're so good. You're so good. You're so good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. 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 I'm not seeing any prayer requests up there right now, but I know that... Um, Miss Carolyn, who is usually on here, um, is with her mother who's in hospice right now. So, Father, for, for Carolyn and everyone else who is um, with a loved one who is, um, who is probably going to be coming home to you shortly, Father, give grace over those situations. Father, let them have sweet final moments together. Father, thank you for having lived beautifully in each of these individuals that you are about to bring home. Father, and we just thank you for ministering to the hearts of, of their family members that are left behind. Father, that they might be able to celebrate in a life well lived and celebrate in the knowledge that, that their loved ones are with you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You're so good. Father, it just makes me want to just give thanks for my own family, my own mother. <laughs> I love my family, Father, and I just thank you for blessing me with the family you've given me. Thank you, Father. You're so good. You're so good. 
Father, even as we're praying for family, I'm thinking of my friend who is at her, her son's wedding this weekend. Father, just praying grace over Miss Mary and over her family, that it might be a harmonious and beautiful time of fellowship. Father, bless them right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And for any of those within the Died for You, Died for you community who are traveling, Father, just traveling mercies over each of them. Thank you, Father. You're so good. You're so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to you be all the praise and the glory and the honor. Father, even as we're praying for physical healing earlier, I just want to remember to you, um, Mike, who makes the, the Died for You flutes, Father, we just bless him right now in the name of Jesus. We just bless his body and pray healing over his body, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Just healing for his, for his eyes and anything else in his body that is troubling him. Father, we just thank you that you are sovereign even over his body, Father. Thank you. Thank you for glorifying yourself in him. Hallelujah. You're so good, Daddy. You're so good. So good. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to lift my brother-in-law up to you. Father, we just thank you for Glenn. Father, we just thank you. Um, for the precious man that you've created him to be. Father, we just thank you that he was able to have surgery successfully. And, and Father, we just ask right now just for grace as he goes back to work and, and just strength to him, Father. Just grace, grace for all that he has to do, Father. We just ask for strength in his body, Father. Peace over him, mind, body, spirit. Father, we just thank you right now for the work that you have given him. Father, bless the fruit of his hands. Bless his body as he does it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, and strength to him even as he um, participates in, uh, you know, his chorus and other things that he does that, that are not work-related. Father, just bless him um, and strengthen him. Thank you, Father. Father, and, and just rest and refreshing to my sister who has had one family member struggle with something after another, Father. Bless her for the sweet and precious helper that she is. Thank you, Father. Multiply it back to her, Father, just in refreshing and peace. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You're so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Shannon, I'm so excited to hear that. Father, thank you so much for the for the job for Shannon's husband. Father, we just offer you praise, Father. We just thank you for opening the, the perfect door and the perfect timing, Father. Just favor and grace and blessings upon him as he starts in this new job, Father. And blessings upon that family and upon their, their finances, Father. We just thank you right now. Hallelujah. Father, bless and multiply all that they have. Thank you, Father. We just bring glory to you, glory and honor. You are so worthy, Daddy. We love you. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's just awesome news, Shannon. Seriously, just so, so happy for you guys. I'm so grateful. That's awesome. Well, guys, that's all I have today. If somebody's watching this later and you have a prayer request, don't hesitate to share it because, as you know, we'll pray over them after the fact. <laughs> and um, for those of you who missed it at the beginning, the, uh, the release was this past week, so they're official. This one's the hardback, but uh, we have hardback, paperback, Kindle. If you got one, please, 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 please consider leaving a review. It would be very, very helpful and beneficial. Amazon, Goodreads, wherever. Um, but uh, I appreciate you guys, and I think that's it for this week. So I will see you um, next week at 1 p.m. Thursday, Central Time. Love you guys and have an awesome week. And in the meantime, happy worshiping. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>